saw. Kind of considered a dinosaur in today's woodworking shops. All right, the Ray Arm Saw, versatile tool in the woodworking shop. But today's woodworking shops, construction sites, it's definitely seldom found and it's kind of considered a dinosaur. It's been replaced mostly by, well, definitely by the miter saw, but in the last 20, 30 years by the sliding miter saw for some predominant factors like cost, uh, size, and definitely portability. <laughs> but speaking of portability, when I was in, in high school, my co-op job through my shop teacher, he had a custom built trailer where the head of the rail arm saw was actually in the trailer and the table was a, built over the fender and we would just unlock it in the back, close it up and he had a door that went in there every night at the end of the site. And it was awesome having a 14 to 16 foot long table for stop blocking studs, trimmers, other components, rafters, things like that on the, on the construction site. The downside was it only moved when the trailer moved and it couldn't go inside on a rainy day. So back then the miter saws were, sliding miter saws either were just being invented, they weren't as prevalent, so the miter saw was restricted to a six or eight inch cut. Where the radio arm saw, ours here at the Warrior Wood Shop can do up to a 16 inch cut. Most of them can do 12 all the way up to 24 and some even larger than that in some like factories. So now that the sliding miter saw has been out there again 20, 30 years plus, 12 inches is kind of the common 2x12 type of material you're going to find that you're going to want to cut with the miter saw. Anything larger than that you're going to refer to your circ saw or even have a portable table saw on the job site. Uh, so what can it do? It cross cuts just like a miter saw since or hence that's why the miter saw has replaced it. But again, the cross cutting capacity is a lot larger, which is one of the reasons we still use it today here at the Warrior Woodshops, 16 inch cross cut capacity. However, the capability of the rail arm saw doesn't stop at just cross cutting. It can cross cut any particular angle, but it's gonna make grooves in the table, so we restrict ours to 90 degree cuts and just keep it that way. But I could actually, and again, I'm not gonna do this due to setup, but I could pull a bunch of these levers, lock it in place, and rotate the head 90 degrees, and now I've got a table saw. One of the crazy things the, <laughs> this can do, and you want to talk about dangerous, and I haven't even done it, is you can rotate the arbor, take this guard off, put the arbor down, and put a shaper cutter on here, and now you have a router. So you couple the size and the production years with the safety uh, features that were available back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. We're talking the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. I'm not that old, guys. Uh, it intimidates a lot of users. I mean, the injury factors due to those lack of safety that we have out today were higher. I don't have any statistics. I'm not going to argue over it. But if something goes wrong, it goes wrong. The other factor you have to consider is since we're working with the rotation of the blade instead of against it, kickback is a lot more prevalent. So, it's a, a lot of people are intimidated by it. I get that. But one myth I want to debunk is this is a cross cut rip, or excuse me, rough cut saw only. Hopefully, you can see here the Warrior Woodshop setup. I've been in, in uh, charge of the Warrior Woodshop for 17 years now using the same radio arm saw. The only thing we've done is replace the top a couple times just because we've gotten dinged up and the finish scratched. But we have been using this same radial arm saw for 17 years, since 2007, and as a finish cut saw. Yeah, we still rough cut, but that's how you get a 12 foot board down to your manageable pieces. But the beauty of the 14 foot fence is you can set up stop blocks and get accurate cuts. It takes accurate setups. It takes proper safety protocols and instruction. But the radial arm saw, coupled with the safe setup and the proper safety routine, can be a woodworking workhorse in your arsenal of tools 
in the workshop. All right, not much has changed in the 50 plus years that the radio arm saw has been around in existence. I haven't had a chance to Google when the first radio arm saw was used or built or invented. So if you have a chance, Google that, leave a comment below because I'm kind of curious to find out how old the radio arm saw is. This one from doing my serial number research, I think is 50 plus years old. Still going strong. We use it every day here at the Warrior Woodshop. But with that being said, I did a video in 2010 on our old channel called Fox Eye Shop. But it's got, here it is 14 years later, 2024, it's got over 160,000 hits. So there's a lot of people that want to know about Ray Alarm Saw. So I want to take a little time warp because evidently by YouTube standards, I must have done something right and finish up the video with that. So I apologize for the 4-3 aspect ratio and the camera quality from 2010 and a little more hair, you know, as I kind of hide it with a hat nowadays. But I'll come back to you at the end. So I'm going to a little time warp back to 2010 and show you what we showed you, taught the kids then, because it's exactly the same as we teach them today. I just mentioned how the radio arm saw can be set up for rip cutting and, and turn into a router. The, we don't do this in, in most workshops because it, it's a lengthy or an involved setup process. It's not impossible. It's not hard to do. But in most woodworking workshops, because of the involvement to change it, it's used for cross cutting only. In a Advantage of the miter saw over the rail arm saw is the ability to cut accurate angles. The miter saw has index stops. The rail arm saw also will rotate, but it has no index stops. Therefore, trying to get to an exact angle, you're going to have to rely on either a protractor or something to gauge the accuracy of the angles and repeat setups is a, is a disadvantage on the rail arm saw. Therefore, in our woodworking classroom, we just use the rail arm saw for 90 degree cuts. It's squared up, and that's what we want it. Occasionally, you need to check it, make sure it hasn't got, the arm hasn't gotten bumped. But we just use it primarily for 90 degree cross cuts, and if you need to cut an angle, you go to the miter saw to perform that operation. Most of us are familiar with a portable circular saw. The radial arm saw is essentially a circular saw on a rail. Ask yourself this, though. Would you cut backwards with a circular saw? Probably said no. I would have the same answer for you. However, this is exactly what a radial arm saw does, so you need to be prepared for kickback when you're using a radial arm saw. Before we go over operation of the radial arm saw, let's talk about some of the parts that you need to be familiar with just for cross cutting. This video is not going to cover all of the parts that are needed for to adjust the saw to rip cut or to turn it into a router or shaper. If you want to use your radial arm saw for some of those operations, consult your owner's manual or a proper training facility for how to do that procedure and operate your radial arm saw other than a cross cutting manner. Up you're going to find a miter scale which is going to with some degree of accuracy gauge what angle you're at. The saw moves on the radial arm you have the switch, it's generally located at the end of the radial arm. Height adjustment handle, this raises and lowers the blade in relationship to the table. Some are located on top of the saw, some are located on the front of the saw just below the table. The fence and the table are both replaceable since the blade must cut through them. The blade should cut into the table about a quarter of an inch. It should cut through the fence as minimal as possible, this will help you produce a zero clearance a cut out and less chip out and reduces the risk of kickback. The blade for cross cutting it's recommended to use a 60 to 80 tooth blade. Upper and lower guards. The lower guards there for visual purposes only. It will actually not prevent you from cutting your hand. It will ride right over the top of this. Be aware of this when you're using the radial arm saw and definitely maintain this a six inch margin of safety. The column supports the whole saw and you have the handle which you're going to pull and push the saw with. Before we use any power tools let's talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety instructions that come with your power tool. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, 
There's no more important safety rule than wear these, your safety glasses. Because of the way the blade rotates, the clamping is actually not required on this saw. The biggest thing you need to worry about though is maintaining that margin of safety. The way you can do this is if you're cutting on the right side of the saw, remember the saw is just like the miter saw, it can be cut left to right hand, just don't cross your arms. If you're positioning the board on the right, look at the motor assembly. If your right hand or holding hand is outside the motor, you're outside the margin of safety. On the left side, you're going to have to judge it a little bit. And one way I judge it is to place my handle hand next to the blade and my holding hand right next to that one. Your hand is approximately five, six inches wide, so if you place your holding hand outside of your handle and then lift your handle hand back up to grab the handle, you're generally outside the margin of safety. If in doubt, be furthest away as possible and still safely hold the board. Body position is important when you're using the radio arm saw. You not only worry about your hands, but you need to worry about how to stand properly or stand in the proper position. If I was to stand flat footed using this saw and the radio arm saw kicked back because of the way the blade rotates, it's going to stay on this rail, but it's going to be unexpected and knock me over backwards. Who, who knows what's behind you that you would fall into? So, so body position, stance is important, similar to playing sports basically. Rotate your body about a 30 to 45 degree angle sideways. Bend your knees a little bit, push towards the fence, and pull out. And as I pull, I'm going to pull and kind of back and pull and just, depending on the thickness and density of the wood, how much I have to pull and push back and forth, you'll get a feel for that the more you use radio arm saw. Just be prepared for a little bit of wanting to pull you as you cut the first time you use it. Now before I turn the saw on, I want to position the saw up against a mark. Just like the miter saw, you want to make sure that you position the blade on the scrap side of your line. Once you're all set up into place, position your hand properly, turn on the saw, pull the saw all the way out just far enough to cut through the back side. There's no need to pull it all 12 inch or 16 inches out. Then be sure to push the saw all the way back and make sure the saw doesn't bounce back through the fence at the end of the returning procedure. If you notice, I pulled the board away from the saw after the cut. However, I did wait to remove the scrap piece. It's very important that you don't put your hand in the intended line of cut just in case the vibration of the saw would cause the radio arm saw to come back out. So be safe when removing your scrap material. Kickback is going to most likely occur when you're using thicker, denser woods, oak, walnut, those hardwoods. Sometimes cutting a 2x10 or 2x12 will speed, or add to the intensity of the kickback. However, the real culprit is cutting too quickly, not resisting the rotation of the saw. So always be prepared to pull out and go back. As long as you're prepared for that, the chance of kickback goes down quite a bit. Now if kickback does occur, just shut the machine off, clear your hands, let everything stop, and then push the saw back through. If the blade, if the blade is stuck on the board, unplug the saw prior to clearing the jam. Most of the time though, it'll just stop the blade up and you'll just have to push the saw back through. Now I know what you want to see, don't you? You want to see some kickback in action. I got myself here a nice wide piece of walnut. As your mom always says, and every TV show along with it always says, do not try this at home. Be safe when you're using the radio arm saw. But just to demonstrate how quickly kickback can occur, here we go. Well, there you have it. The radio arm saw is a tool that demands respect. And if you give the saw that respect, not fear, give it the respect it deserves, it will become a major workhorse in the woodworking arsenal. Always be safe and follow all the general safety guidelines when you're using your power tools. Now go out and make some sawdust. So the radio arm saw, 
They're out there on Marketplace. I just looked today. They're all the way from $100 to $500. In fact, I purchased one of this exact model. In fact, it's got the 24 inch capacity for my home workshop for $450. To replace it today would be a $3,800 saw. I can't wait to get that set up into my retirement shop. But right now, I'm going to stick the old trusty here. For 10 years, I had the Craftsman 12 inch radar arm saw, and I think I paid 200 bucks in 2002. So the, the price uh, point is still where it was even 20 years ago. Just remember safety, setup, and proper operation will help you t take the radar arm saw from just a rough cutting saw to your go to saw, which a lot of our students consider this now for your 12 to 16 inch cuts every day in your workshop. So thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment to, as to whether you prefer the radial arm saw over the miter saw. I, I will put a little bug in here that once my students conquer up the, the courage to use it under proper safety supervision the first few times they use it, they realize how much of a workhorse this saw really is. And the added extended fence and all that that we built into our workshop is a big bonus. So, again, thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment on your thoughts. And hit that bell so you can get notified when we do other safety videos and project videos. So, thanks for watching. Go out and make some sawdust.